Walking down the streets of Glock, it feels like walking through the past. This is one of the most infamous and well-preserved Delta towns in California with an incredibly shady past. Hey, you. Who, me? Yeah, you. I'm watching you, buddy. I'm not doing anything, man. Welcome to the something or other tour. Welcome to the Something or Other Tour. We're in Lock, California. This is a historic district here on the Sacramento Delta. It's got an amazing history. This tiny little town has a very seedy past and one of the most controversial histories that is still being disputed to this day. Locke is very much a town frozen in time, a town built on private land to escape some of the rules of society. Got Steve-O with me. I have never been to a place where the history is this disputed, this controversial, and just poorly documented in general, which makes it more difficult. So that keeps the conversation going. This land was originally inhabited by Miwok Native Americans. There are still burial mounds in the area. This is the Lock Boarding House. It's now ran by the state parks. It's a little mini museum. It's closed right now. Part of the controversy that people argue over is when Locke was actually founded. So as the sign says, 1915. That's kind of the accepted story. But there's records, there's newspaper clippings and other things like that that show that this was actually a township called Lockport well before that, like in the 1890s. This was private land owned by George W. Locke and then ran by his son and grandson over the years. And it has a very seedy past. Apparently, a huge portion of all these buildings at one point housed brothels, gambling dens, or even opium dens. George W. Locke had come out here from the East Coast during the California gold rush, but instead of trying to pan for gold, he actually started selling wares, furniture, and things like that, I believe. And he ended up buying some huge parcels of land, this being one of them. One of the first settler developments was an encampment for railroad workers and a rail yard from a now long gone railroad line. He originally started the town of Lockport, which was eventually shortened to Lock, and here it is. Lock is also a hotbed of paranormal activity. It's been on a bunch of TV shows and things like that. So we will be doing another episode at night when the sun goes down because we are staying here at a bed and breakfast and we're gonna have an episode about that as well. So it'll be kind of a three part series on Lock. We'll come out here at night. We'll talk about some of the supernatural paranormal stories, some of the tall tales and urban legends of Lock. Sacramento Delta region was full of different little port towns, rail towns, all sorts of hidden history between the big cities on the Delta. There's a lot of crazy stuff happening and they were able to get away with a lot. One of the longest continually running places is Owls. Owl the slurs. <laughs> It's a working bar and one of the few places here you can actually get something to eat. The town sits right on the Sacramento River and we're sort of right in between the triangle of Sacramento, San Francisco, and Stockton, three major cities at the time. So people traveling between them could stop here. They could gamble all night, visit a brothel, stay the night at one of the hotels, and then complete the rest of their trip the next day. So a lot of politicians and other notable people probably came through here because it was sort of this enclave. They called it California's Monte Carlo. A lot of these storefronts are just empty. Buildings are dilapidated, falling apart. But at one time, there was at least 600 to 1,000 people living in this little tiny community. Locke had its own post office and a Locke family member, Clay B. Locke, was the postmaster. Since the town was on private land, it had many of its own services, including the constable, who was at one time a man named George Carlton. Things old and odd. Guess I should be in there. These buildings, a lot of them were built so haphazardly, there's actually no foundation. A lot of the buildings are wobbly, the floors are uneven. You can see here, there's no foundation on this building. Some of these places have been repurposed. This used to be the Moon Cafe, now it's sort of like an antique store. 
One of the people responsible for building a lot of this apparently was a guy named Cleveland Hill. He started in the 1890s and that's part of the history that's sort of being disputed. But there is record of Cleveland Hill being here and building up the properties for George Locke. So the story goes that in about 1915, in nearby Walnut Grove, in their Chinatown, there was a huge fire. After that, the Chinese population was looking to rebuild, and they asked George Locke if they could come here onto his property, so this was all private land, and build a new Chinatown. At that time, the Chinese were prohibited from a lot of things that citizens could do, such as owning land. That was a big one. So that was one of the reasons they came here. They asked George Locke for permission to stay here. He charged them rent. And since this was private land, none of those laws came into play. So the story is often presented as the Chinese came and built this entire town, but the records show that portions of this town were already here. And then census records from about 1915 to 1930 show that there was a wide range, diverse range of people living here from Americans to the Chinese to Spanish to Italians to Germans. So the Chinese population had a huge hand in this, but there was actually a diverse range of people here. It looks like a Wild West town, but it was really mostly built kind of post Wild West. The frontier was dying and this town was part of ending the Wild West. A ton of Chinese immigrants came to the United States to help build the Transcontinental Railroad. Once the railroad was finished, many of them found themselves in California and they had to find a new trade, a new way of life, if they weren't gonna head back to China. And the Chinese set up shop in this area, in nearby Walnut Grove, Isleton, and then eventually here in Locke. A lot of the Chinese in this area that settled in the Delta, one of the skills that they had was agriculture and farming. So the Chinese came, they helped with the Swampland Reclamation Act of 1861. They basically helped build a levee system which created some of the most prime agricultural real estate in the world. And all these levees around here and all these communities might not be possible if it wasn't for the Chinese immigrants that had worked on the railroads and then found themselves working on the levee system. They brought the tricks of the trade that they had learned in their province in China. There was, of course, mercantiles and butcher shops. There were canneries on the river to then ship them upriver to Sacramento or downriver to San Francisco to sell. Just north of town was a Libby McNeil and Libby asparagus canning operation. I believe the canneries burnt down. I would have loved to see them. It almost feels like we're in a Mark Twain novel. There's a community garden back here. Even today, look how rural this place is. Even though it sits between three pretty big cities, Sacramento, Stockton, and San Francisco. Multiple generations of families lived in Locke. Much of them Chinese. They weren't allowed to live other places, so they came here. The Locke family let them set up a life here. Of course, a lot is talked about as far as the criminal element and the seediness around here. But this was a real community with real people, which was very multicultural and diverse and accepting of those different cultures. Now they do say that at some point, perhaps due to the Tong Mafia, they were less accepting of outsiders, but who knows, that could be tall tales, right? I mean, honestly, you expect to see Huck Finn out here, Tom Sawyer running around. There's a lot to explore here, including these little back alleyways, and there's still a good amount of people, a good amount of residents living in a lot of these buildings. Definitely feels like you're in Red Dead Redemption. Up top here was the Star Theater. They ran plays and various shows up there. You see this one is doing a little bow under the Star Theater. Locals apparently have bets on when this thing's gonna topple over. But I was here. I touched it before it toppled. People started putting up locks like they do it. A lot of bridges and things like that. That's definitely not going to help. And people have carved all sorts of names and stuff. So many secrets and lost history when you walk through these alleyways. It's so cool walking around here. It's like, it's like history. It's a little creepy. There's all the paranormal stories. There's still some activity. There's still people around. When you stay here overnight, especially, you'll just hear voices. People will be walking through the alleys. Feels like I'm in Deadwood. Even though this wasn't necessarily a Wild West town, it definitely still has 
that sort of vibe. So it was built somewhat haphazardly. Regulations be darned. That's why you see so many buildings leaning over. This balcony looks like it's just gonna go any day now. As you see, most of the buildings have these balconies, and these ones are missing the balcony. Well, they originally had balconies, but apparently someone had a little bit too much to drink at Owl's over here, or one of the other saloons or bars, and they took out the two balconies. So now that green door from the Star Theater exits out to nowhere. It's a long drop. Yep, save it, save it. There's a door up there with no railing, so I'm sure that used to be a balcony, but at some point it was converted to just an overhang. Down at the end here is the Lockport Grill and Fountain. We're actually staying at a bed and breakfast upstairs. We'll have a separate video for that. This pigeon building is just <laughs> bursting at the seams with pigeons. Apparently, sometimes a red hawk will get in there and just a cloud of pigeons will come out. And before, a lot of the windows were intact and they said when that would happen, pigeons would just bust out the windows. Glass would go flying everywhere. I wish I could see that. It sounds like a scene from a Western. So this was sort of this uh, lawless little enclave in the Delta region. It's very reminiscent of like a bayou. Reminds me of the South a lot. Just gambling and all kinds of crazy stuff going on out by the river. So this appears to be one of the famous levees. And the houses are built on either side of the levee. And the levee's like a pathway. Looks like they harvested them. But... Tomatoes? Looks like tomato vines. You're not gonna make a, when a levee ran dry? Joe, absolutely not. And I forbid you to as well. And the American pie and the, the guy in the truck. Just because we're on a levee doesn't mean we have to make that joke. These levees helped conquer the marsh and the swamplands out here to make California one of the most fertile agricultural regions in the world. And these levees prevented flooding. It dried out the land enough to be able to farm. Very interesting history we're walking on right here. Dude, it actually wasn't even a Chevy. It was a Toyota Tercel that he drove to the levee. I, I, I get it wrong a lot. But when you walk down Levy Road, other back ways, there's a lot of private residencies. Residencies. This is really like just walking through the past. Present day, there are still people living here among the dilapidated and historical surroundings. This right here is the Lockport Hotel, still boarded up. This was not just a hotel, apparently it was a brothel, possibly a gambling den for a while as well. There's also records that this hotel at one point was shut down for violating the Red Light Abatement Act. So they were getting in trouble for running a brothel and other nefarious acts. Those walls could talk. The hotel sits right on Levy Road. And this out here is River Road. So across River Road, you got the big marina boathouse. And then the Sacramento River is right on the other side of that. And so if you see this sunken down, apparently during one of the world wars, they raised all these levees in the area to prevent more flooding. And they raised this levee a little bit higher. So now you can no longer see the Sacramento River over there. But apparently before you could, there was actually a wraparound balcony on this hotel. And from there you could see the river. If you look close in the right lighting, you can still see the Lockport Hotel text emblazoned on the rough wooden side of the building. The one in the town, you got the Lock Garden Chinese Restaurant. is awesome. This is amazing. The way this place was just kind of haphazardly built, it's just full of mystery. There's like just hidden windows. It's like everywhere you look, there's some crazy stuff. It's almost whimsical. This is the Wa Li Dry Goods Store. One of the many storefronts operated by Chinese. This is the Yun Chong Meat Market and General Merchandise, a Chinese general store. This is definitely one of the most well-preserved storefronts still left in lock. Really cool. 
Hey, am I ever gonna get a clone? Absolutely not. <laughs> what? Let him get I, a clone. It wouldn't hurt anything. Shit. Nah. No. If it was up to me. I'm just gonna get food and stuff. This is the Lock Schoolhouse. The school was built in 1915, but it was actually kind of a town hall at first. And then in 1926, the Nationalist Party of China provided funding to turn this into sort of an after-school program to basically promote Chinese culture and relations here in Lock in this community that was a big portion Chinese. And the school operated until about the mid-1980s. Generations of kids in Lock came to school here. Teacher! Steven's throwing things at me. Steven. No! What? He's throwing things. Not throwing at him. He's throwing. You guys need to knock that off. The school was eventually named after Joe Shung. He's a Chinese American entrepreneur. I'm pretty sure he started the Dollar General stores and he provided funding for the school, so they named it after him. Apparently where this park now that's dedicated to the Chinese, there was another gambling hall or saloon. And that's where an infamous murder happened. A guy apparently tried to steal some money. He ran out, I think on the other side towards the river and he was shot. We'll talk more about that in the nighttime episode. This park is now dedicated to Lok and dedicated to the Chinese that helped build the railroad. And then they eventually helped with the swampland and the agriculture and then set up shop here. I believe that somewhere along the lines, the history got skewed a little bit to say that this town was built by Chinese for Chinese when the records show that that's not entirely the case. Although, of course, their culture had a huge, huge impact on Locke and the surrounding areas. So their contributions are not forgotten at all. But according to a 1930 census, only about 37% of the residents of Locke were Chinese. And that includes the Chinese Americans that were born here. Over time, the population shifted to become majority Chinese in the mid 20th century. But this history is hotly contested, and actually a few residents here have had back and forth. So there's been lawsuits, there's been wild city council meetings, all kinds of stuff. So it's very controversial around here, how this history actually went. So all up in these businesses and such, there was gambling going on, there was opium dens, there were brothels. And it's rumored that this was a territory of the Tong Mafia. As I said, this was called California's Monte Carlo. Gambling, drugs, prostitution, things like that. Which means a lot of that history was never recorded. A lot of the history here was hush-hush. But we do have census records, we do have newspaper clippings. A San Francisco newspaper mentioned Lockport, California back in 1885. So there was definitely something here before that fire in Walnut Grove when the Chinese immigrants over there came over here and asked George W. Locke to set up shop here. And he allowed them. I'd like to think it was a gracious gesture considering the situation of the Chinese at the time. Basically second class citizens, not allowed to own land, not allowed to do a lot of things. Luckily, Locke gave them the chance to not own the land, but build up the land and provide a life for themselves and their families. Still to this day, there's a Chinese presence here. The culture and history has been preserved. It's open for us. This is another building that apparently the Tong ran, and now it's a museum filled with all kinds of history. This place is dedicated to the history around here and just Chinese culture in general. How many fun times were had over this table? There's a lot of history that's lost, a lot of history that's disputed. Like George W. Locke, this was his land, but he died before the town was officially founded. So his sons and his grandsons worked here, and apparently they had their hand in some of the underworld here as well. They possibly ran some of the brothels, the gambling dens, maybe even the opium dens, so they were part of the drug trade. Every one of these buildings holds secrets. The type of thing, you pull up the floorboards and you find like someone's gold or like yeah. notes, like their lovers or something. Yeah. There wasn't a police presence. They did have occasional raids where they would shut things down. They would have these huge busts in the gambling halls and the brothels and the opium dens. But in large part, they kind of left this place alone. So it was sort of this little lawless town on the Delta. And there was some violence, but it seemed like most of it was just partying. 
The Dai Loi is one of the most infamous buildings here, since they did say there was a presence of the Tong Mafia, although that usually just meant community, and they would help Chinese immigrants navigate society, help them with resources, finding a place to live, education. Who knows how much of that was actually organized crime. According to legend outside the Dai Loi gambling hall, there'd be a lookout that would sit on one of these benches, and they had a secret button that would alert the illegal games going on in the back of the presence of authorities or anything like that. Is this the button? <gasps> it's Steve! In these back alleyways and all these buildings, there's all sorts of crazy shenanigans going on. Just a wild place. Today the Dai Loi is closed, but we're super lucky that we're gonna get private access. So this is the Dai Loi, one of the most infamous buildings here in Lot. This is where Locke's shadiest figures came to have fun. This is where out-of-towners traveling would stop by, play a game of chance, maybe go upstairs, have some extracurricular fun. So much history in these walls here. This place is so cool. I mean, the floor is completely entirely warped. This is like walking downhill. This is walking uphill. It's hard to appreciate how warped these floors are on camera, so I will illustrate. Here is a numbers ping pong ball. And there she goes. <laughs> that is not spirits or ghosts, that is the warbly floor. The front door is all bolted up, look at that. Of course, when you're doing illegal activities, you might need some protection. You had an iron pipe, wrap it with newspaper, and you would just bonk people right on their noggin. And this was the lottery room. Hey, you kids knock it off. Stop getting rowdy. Have to bring out the lead pipe or iron pipe, whatever, whichever pipe I got. I mean, are we docking gambling den here? There's various games of chance being played in here. I'm sure there was arguments. I'm sure there's fun times, laughs, cries. So much history in this building. This is the money room, so of course there's bars on the windows here. And this is where they would store the cash. If you've ever watched my channel at all, you know I go gaga over old safes. Saves? Safes. Safe. Safes. Safes. Saves. Safes. Right there. The gaggle. <laughs> a group of safes is called a murder. When you're counting the money, you have to be naked. It says closed, right? So you would think that means closed. Not for us. All right, let's go upstairs. Well, upstairs is apparently where the brothel was. Come on up. Wager a guess that this bed didn't have much give. Oh, 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 whoopsie. So apparently, they, you know, they would have illicit activities up here. It was a brothel. And what's really cool is in the corner of this room, there's a little window that looks down out onto the playing field. So maybe the, the pit master, the boss was up here, you know, making sure that all the games were going according to plan. Sometimes we forget the people in these stories were actual people, actual humans, feelings and emotions, you know? Being back here, applying the only trade you have uh, was probably not the best life. It's a very tight squeeze in here. I am super duper tall, but still, 
I got like five bucks, but I need like a invalid. $100. I need a hundred dollar marker. Invalid. Man. Get out of here. What I got? Like I got a watch. I told you three times this week. You're not allowed in here anymore. Man, bring you're one not sheep allowed in. To eat chicken nuggets at the gaming tables. After decades and decades, when the Locke family finally decided to sell, they sold it to an investor from Hong Kong. And that's when he wanted to start preserving the history. That's when they started the effort to put up the monuments, the memorial garden, things like that. Part of the controversy is how much of this preserved history is honest or embellished. But the place kind of wallowed for a few decades until finally 20 or so years ago, California State Parks got involved. They added some plumbing, added fire sprinklers. This is one of the few towns where fire wasn't a huge problem. It's very rare if you've seen my other Wild West videos. There was some fires, but the town in itself never burnt down completely like a lot of these towns did. An amazing time capsule of history here on the Sacramento Delta. So what's the true history here? We don't really know. We know what the records show. Some of the people that dispute some of the history, it's through oral teachings. So we know that can be inaccurate sometimes. So is it inaccurate? Possibly. So what's the real history? Who's to say? It's like there's people in town, they're beefing with each other about how the history actually went down. I seem to think both sides are actually somewhat correct. You can't neglect the history of all the other immigrants that were here, the Italians, the Germans, the Japanese, Hawaiians, I believe. But obviously the Chinese did have a huge, huge part in this place. Because of the discrimination that the Chinese faced, this was one of the only places that they were allowed to sort of thrive, build a life for themselves. There's definitely such a rich history here. And I love the, the culture and the history of the Chinese immigrants building the railroads and Chinatown in San Francisco. They were mistreated. They were discriminated against. It's an awful, tragic story, but the perseverance, the human spirit is beautiful. Everybody here was super kind. The proprietor of the bed and breakfast we stayed at down at the end, Martha Esch, knew a ton of history, had a ton of artifacts. Jamie Rubio has a great blog filled with stories and history. And a local named Kim helped us out greatly. And one of the owners of a lot of these places, Clarence Chu, to allow us into these places that are closed. And that's it for the town of Locke. Check out the other videos. This will be part of a small series. We have a bunch of historical videos like this. Make sure you check those out. We have a Patreon if you'd like to support the channel. As little as a dollar a month, you get a bunch of bonus content. And thanks to all the Patreon subscribers we have already. You guys are awesome. Like, subscribe, share, do all the cool things the cool kids do. Something or other tour for life. Those towers, I don't know if they're radio towers or what, but they're deceptively tall. They're so tall and ominous. By the entrance, this almost looks like it could have been a window. Wonder if they would have took tickets or something and then let you into the big door. Drove his little Chevy Volt down to the down to the levee. <laughs>